Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we continue our look at Lesson 7. So we're going to be on page 25 in the New Life in Christ booklets. Uh, make sure you have those with you. Uh, if not, you better pause this and go quick run and get them because you're going to need to have them so we can fill out things in our workbooks for this morning. Today we're going to talk about the question, and answer it even, when will Jesus come again? So we talked last class period about what happens when a person dies. That the soul and body separate, the body goes into the grave, into the ground and decomposes, the soul goes for judgment and either is judged as a believer's soul to go to heaven, or as an unbeliever's soul in order to go to hell. Remember, the body stays in the grave until Judgment Day. That's when Jesus comes again. So what we're going to look at today are some of the things that Scripture tells us about Jesus' return, about his second coming into this world. Sometimes we refer to that as Judgment Day. The time leading up to it, those days, we refer to as the end times. So, we're going to start with the question, when will Jesus come again? And we look first to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 42 through 44. This is Jesus speaking with his disciples. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So one of the key factors that we must remember about Jesus' return to this earth is that no one knows the day or the time except for God. No human being, no person will be able to predict when Jesus is going to return. And because of that, we're supposed to be ready. We're supposed to keep watch we are always supposed to be looking for Christ's return and knowing that we are ready to receive him through faith because no one will be able to tell us what that day is. So whenever you hear someone saying, oh, they know when the world is going to end and they know when Jesus is going to return and they start making predictions about that and telling dates, they're liars. Because scripture says no one knows the day except for God. But there are going to be some signs of the end times. Some of the things that, that when we see them happening around us and in the world, we're to remember this is happening because Jesus is returning. So let's go back to Matthew's gospel, chapter 24. And we're going to look at verses 4 through 14. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, 
the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So these signs, these things that are happening that are showing us that the end, are, end is coming, the Jesus says, are like the beginnings of birth pains. It's like when a woman goes into labor and she starts feeling contractions, she knows the baby's about to be born. That's what those pains are there for, to remind her to get ready, to go to the hospital, to get to a place where there will be others to help her deliver the baby. Same thing is true about the end times and the signs that we see. They're there to remind us, hey, Jesus is coming. I need to keep watching. I need to get ready. I need to be prepared. Because as the world draws closer to the end, it will become more ungodly. The world isn't going to get better. It's going to keep getting worse. There will be more evil. There will be more things that you and I don't like happening in the world. And there's going to be a lot of those signs in various places and in various ways. If we look at the signs that are going to happen in society, is there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. We know that's happening. Across the globe, there are countries fighting with each other and people fighting with each other. Just a reminder, Jesus is coming. In nature, there's going to be earthquakes and famines. There's going to be this horrible change in nature. When these things happen, we're to remind ourselves, yeah, that's right. Jesus is coming. He can come at any time. And in the church, there are going to be false messiahs, false Christs who come and say, Hey, I'm the Messiah. Follow me. The true church is going to be persecuted. They're going to be hated in the world. And the gospel is going to continue to spread. So that's the one highlight in all of these signs of the time, of the end times. So many of them are bad, and so many of them say, look how horrible this is. The one thing that is a positive is that the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, will still be spread throughout the world. The problem is that the love of most will grow cold. And people, even in the church, will begin to hate each other and, and fall away from the church. But those are just reminders that Jesus is coming. As hard and difficult as it is for us to say that we, you know, don't want these things happen, these things to happen, they have to, they must because they point us to Jesus' return. So Jesus is going to come. He can come at any time. All of these signs of the end times have occurred and are occurring. We need to be ready. We need to be watching. Because yeah, we still don't know the day or the time. Now, how is Jesus going to return to this world when he comes again? Let's look at Matthew 25, verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. So Jesus is going to return in glory, and all of his angels are going to be with him. He is going to come as the commander of the army of the heavenly host, and they are going to come with him to help him in gathering all of the people in front of him and separating them for judgment. That's what's going to happen. 
The other thing that's important for us to remember is we have to go back to Jesus' ascension. Remember, Jesus' ascension was when he went back up to heaven. It happened after his resurrection. Do you remember how many days it was? The ascension is 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. And at that event, this is what the angels said to the disciples after they had watched Jesus be taken up into heaven in a cloud. The angels said this to the disciples who were there. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So when Jesus returns, we are going to realize that he is going to return visibly with his body. Not invisible, but visibly, so that every eye will see him. Jesus isn't going to sneak back into this world where no one's going to see him and no one's going to know what's going on. The heavens are going to open. The angels are going to be there. He's going to be there with his body. And everyone will see him. That's important because when people who talk about Jesus returning, saying it's going to be a spiritual return or an invisible return, they're against what Scripture says about that return. Or we can even go to the book of Revelation again and see what it has to say about Jesus' return. It says, look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. There is not anyone who will not see Jesus return. Everyone will see him. Everyone will know that he has come back, even those who nailed him to the cross. So when Jesus returns, no one is going to miss that day or that event. And then some things are going to happen. Because Jesus is returning for a reason and a purpose. The first purpose is going to deal with all of the people who had died before that day. These are Jesus' words in John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. Do not be amazed at this, for the time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. So the first thing we're going to realize is that all of the dead people, believers and unbelievers, will be raised to life. The power of the Almighty God will take the dust of each person and form that body back together of that individual and raise it to life. And then we're going to see that they are going to be judged, which is exactly what Acts 17.31 says. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with his justice, by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So Jesus is the one who is the judge because he rose from the dead. That's what scripture says. He's the one the Father has appointed. He's the one who said, This is necessary for you to do this. That's why you're coming back into the world. You will judge the living and the dead. And once again, the believers who have, through faith, trusted in Jesus, have the forgiveness of sins, and have done good works, are going to go to heaven. The unbelievers who have rejected Christ 
and don't believe or trust in him and have lived a life separate from him will be separate from him for all eternity. That is what's going to happen when Jesus returns. He's there to judge the world. And we have a longer section about that judgment in Matthew's Gospel. This is how Jesus himself describes the work that he is going to do when he returns. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and the, all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger, and invite you in, or needing clothes, and clothe you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So the judgment is really easy. Jesus will look at all the people of the world standing before him, and he will easily and quickly be able to distinguish the believers from the unbelievers. Just as easy if you look at a sheep and a goat, you can tell the difference between the two of them. Jesus will gather all of the believers to his right, all of the unbelievers to his left. And then he will say to the believers, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. He will say that to all who believed him, as evidenced by their new lives. Then he's going to turn to the unbelievers on his left, and he will say, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil. And to all who reject him and gave evidence of this in their lives, this will be the sentence he speaks to them. Which is exactly what John 3.18 says. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So the believers are not condemned. They get to go to heaven which is their inheritance as the children of God, through faith in the work of Jesus. The unbelievers will be sent to hell. 
because their sins have not been removed because they didn't trust and believe in God's only Son. Those are the first events of Judgment Day. That's what Jesus will do when he comes again. We don't know what day that is. None of us does. But we've seen the signs, and we need to be ready. Because we will see Jesus return with our eyes. And Jesus will say to us who believe, Come to me, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, eternal life in heaven. There's a reason for rejoicing. That's what makes today a good day. That's what makes every day a good day. Because we live as the children of God. So remember to do your assignment for today, the worksheet that you have. Continue to do your memory work so that when the quiz comes, you're going to be ready for it. That's all I have for you today, other than to say I hope that today is a good day for you. And we will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.